Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am delighted to welcome you to the 2019 Horasis Global Meeting here in Kashkais. Under the theme catalyzing the benefits of globalization, the Horasis community of selected world leaders gather for an unparalleled experience, devising novel ideas to sustain and nurture our development in the future. Horasis is an independent international organization committed to inspiring our future by engaging leaders from business, government, and civil society to shape the global agenda. This year's meeting, ladies and gentlemen, is chosen, the theme is chosen, because we at Horasis believe that the concept of globalization needs to be regenerated in the face of growing populism, nationalism, and egoism. This event, ladies and gentlemen, is co-hosted by the city of Kashkais and the Portuguese government. This is the third edition of the Horasis Global Meeting here in Kashkais. My thanks go to the city of Kashkais and the government of Portugal for this incredible and fantastic support. Two heads of states, as well as various ministers, uh, will participate, as well as CEOs and entrepreneurs from around 70 countries, from all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, convening at a historic moment in which resentment of globalization is spoiling over worldwide, you delegates are invited to discuss means of restoring faith in the idea of an egalitarian globalization and to devise actionable plans to, for ensuring that the fruits of globalization are more evenly distributed. Over the last decades, globalization has rapidly transformed industries and economies worldwide. It has brought jobs to developing nations, facilitating cross-cultural exchanges and a transformed technical know-how and created conditions for democracy. But policy has not kept pace, and today a great portion of the world perceives globalization of themselves to be globalization losers. Globalization seems to have weakened our economic middle. Partisan election campaigns have eroded the political middle, and now the cultural middle is eroding. Ladies and gentlemen, we require a new modus operandi that restores people's faith in the idea of globalization, and one that makes good on those promises. Expressing local, regional, and global problems can arise quickly. We need levels of corporations. Countries and corporations cannot come up with on their own. We need to strengthen multilateral cooperation. As a society, we have the moral obligation to protect those who do not have the resources to protect themselves. And to that moral justification, we can add a pragmatic, rational. Economic stability for the masses fosters political stability and undermines fear-based politics. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to explore a more morally decent form of globalization. It is my wish that in the next three and a half days, here at Horasis, we will find ways to catalyze the benefits of globalization. I wish you a fruitful Horasis Global Meeting here in Kashkais. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let me now call on Miguel Pintolouche, the Vice Mayor of Kashkais, our host here. Please welcome Miguel Pintolouche. My dear friend uh, who made this meeting happen, Miguel. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I will start with a heartfelt welcome to my municipality, Kashkais, once again. Welcome, my dear friends for this fourth edition of the Global, Orasis Global, and the third one here being held in Kashkaj. It is a true pleasure to welcome you to my hometown, which is, I 
definitely know that, is your town from now on. This is the opening of the fourth edition, as I said, of the Rasis Global Meeting. It's an honor for Kashkarish to be hosting such a prestigious event. My first words on behalf of the municipality and on behalf of my mayor must, of course, be directed at Frank Jürgen Richter, my dear friend, the chairman of this Oasis vision of this Oasis conference. Thank you, Frank, for choosing Kashkarish once again. Thank you, Frank, for believing that Kashkarish can be home to such a prestigious event. Thank you, Frank, for spreading the name of Kashkarish and Portugal, of course, so far and wide. As, as Frank said on many occasions in, in his addresses, Orasis and Kashkais are already one single team. And it is with pride that this team is set to stay and continue. This fourth edition is, without a shadow of a doubt, an enormous challenge. Over 800 guests from all over the world, more than 1,500 participants, a demanding, diverse, and very interesting work schedule. For politicians to entrepreneurs, people of different cultures, all will be debating the challenges of globalization over the next four days. And we are facing so many challenges. It is precisely in this culture of debate that we see ourselves. We in Qashqai have this view of the world, knowledge sharing, informal contact, the quest for cooperation agreement, and the capacity for networking. All of these are the foundation of our work for us here in Qashqai. The challenges of globalization, a process which can neither be denied nor counteracted, it obliges us all to look at the world from a global perspective and seek to find answers to these global issues. From the economy to financial markets, via trade cryptocurrencies, to the way we organize our society, or from the environment, especially as regards pressures on climate change, to citizen participation in community building, or from Brexit to terrorism and fundamentalism. From technological advances, including artificial intelligence, to the future of food, and feeding people, from the labor market to innovation and entrepreneurship, from culture to the respect for diversity. Many are, this, many are the issues that we will have before us over the next four days. Issues which impact on the lives of each and every one of us in this room, but more important, on each and every one of the seven billion citizens of this planet. We in Kashkais are watchful and concerned about the future. But above all, we want to be prepared for that very future. A future which responds to people's demands. A future which is faced and viewed as an opportunity and not a fatality. Globalization begins in the cities, in the way we organize ourselves, be it in Kashkais, in London, or in Tokyo. To speak of challenges of globalization is to speak about cities. Today, cities are constructed on the basis of people's lives. This movement of bringing people, services, culture offerings, restaurants, education, work, sports, all together in one place, a more reduced area, obliges us to a careful, considered, and efficient planning of the said concentration. These are global answers to local issues, of course. And for that reason, in Kashkais, we place so much importance on what is done around the world. We seek to learn and copy the best of what we see around the world, without dogmas, without complexes. In Kashkais, we want to provide answers to people's problems. Better mobility, better quality of life, better env environment, better security, better spirit to attract investment, and better tourism, of course. And so our motto, as you all in the fourth edition, edition should know, our motto in Kashkais is the best place to live a day, a week, or a lifetime. And so in Kashkais, a municipality of more than 220,000 inhabitants, with a foreign population of almost 20%, over 130 
30 different nationalities that live in this small territory, we make every effort to integrate this phenomenon of globalization, and we are always open to welcoming more people who come to Qashqai in search for their happiness project. As I have said before, we are a council which is concerned with quality of life, but one which also aims to provide a global and integrated offer. More culture, as I said, more entertainment, more leisure, but also an efficient public service. It is absolutely fundamental for any citizen of Qashqai to have a council which provides timely answers and comfort so that they can live without worries. I would like to leave two examples of the much that we do to integrate our citizens in this municipality. No more than two examples, I, I, I promise to you all. Last year, I had the honor of representing Qashqai in Vienna in the, in the attribution of the award for the Qashqai City Points app from the World Awards for Digital Innovation with Impact on Society. We thus become the first local authority to win since the outset of the World Summit Awards by the United Nations, as you may know, in, 2000, in 2000, 2003. This year we hosted that very event here in our territory, in the new campus of Nova School of Business and Economics in Kirkevelj. The app that we have developed, the City Points Qashqais, uh, and allow me just to say that it is truly innovative worldwide, aims to promote good citizenship and recognize those citizens who actively contribute to local sustainability. The City Points Qashqai's app allows citizens to accumulate points when they are carrying out predefined actions and then exchange them, redeem those points for services and vouchers sponsored by local partners who have joined the City Points program. The compensated, compensated actions are connected to, of course, environment, citizenship, social responsibility, and sustainable mobility. And the rewards can range from free tickets to museums, plants, books, guided visits, experiences, workshops, tickets to our concerts, rock concerts, animal welfare service, etc., and etc. But please allow me to highlight another example of the work my staff, the entire municipality, are, uh, is implementing. I work for a town council, and I'm lucky enough as well as having the honor of working for a council like Kashkaj. Our work as local government is to improve lives of the others. There, are, there is a fundamental maxim to create conditions for an effective improvement in the lives of people every time they step out of their front doors. That's the, our maxim. From clean streets to mobility, from culture to support of entrepreneurship, we need to work hard, very hard, on different levels to solve people's problems. However, the necessity and urgency with which we are faced on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis is not consistent with the sometimes slowness and bureaucracy of the legalities, which is obviously uh, very, very intensive in public sector. Very often we see months and months wasted in licensing and permits, inspections and public tenders which do not permit us to act as fast as we would like. There are nevertheless two key factors which allow us to fulfill our objectives. First, strategy, to have a strategy. The design of our action and focus on our objectives. In Qashqais, each action, action that we develop has a very defined objective. To make Qashqais the council to live, to live in, to visit or to do business, that is the basis of our work. None of this would be possible without people. To that extent, can we motivate people with such a strict, strict regime, as well as difficulty of financial incentives? It's very hard for us. It is not easy. Today, public service Public service has rules which do not allow for rewarding of merit, for, for example. It is not merely by chance that our logo contains the phrase, 
it all starts with people. It is, we believe, the basis for the success of any strategy. People, our people in this case. And we wanted to involve our colleagues, but also our citizens. In Kashkaz, we manage a large budget. Just to give you a sense of dimension, Kashkaz has the second largest budget in municipalities in Portugal. And we estimate that next year, the budget will surpass 300 million euros. It is a figure which obliges a rigorous level of control, of course, precision and total transparency. Transparency is the word. As public decision makers, we have to take decisions, to make choices. That is a basic rule of leadership. And those who lead must decide, and I must decide on a daily basis. Of course, the quality of the decision is important, but we are managing everyone's money. It's not our, uh, ours. It, doesn't, it does not just belong to the shareholder. It is everyone's money. And we are public sector managers, civil servants, responsible for every act and decision we take. Should we invest in improving schools or in quality of training? Should we focus on health care or repairing our roads? Should we build a children's playground or a new cycle lane? We make countless management decisions which impact on people's lives. These are challenging times we have ahead of us. Technological advances, especially at the level of communication between the elected and the voters, make the work we do even more challenging. And we, we now have a huge gap between the body of voters and the elected. These are the challenges of globalization. For this very reason, that are also a great challenges for the political class, especially the local governments. Today, consumer demands are on the same level as voter demands. They are the same target group in the end of the day. Today, working in a local council obliges total commitment. There is no time schedules for the response to people's needs. We also have to be permanently connected via smartphone, via social networks, internet. We must have the capacity to understand the needs of the people, and we must have the capacity to listen to criticism and to provide responses to those same criticisms. Politics are also facing a period of adaptation. A lot has been said as regards the distancing between politicians and the voters, that gap that I've mentioned before. That distance must be fixed by the capacity to involve citizens in the choices made by both cities and countries. It was for this reason that Kashkais was a pioneer in that connection. Today, Kashkais has a global projection as regards the leadership of the reinvention and reinforcement, reinforcement of democratic process. In Portugal, the most ambitious projects of re-democratization of democracy have been led by the local governments through the use of the tools of participative democracy. Among all of these tools, the one that has proven most successful has been, of course, the participatory budget. The principle of the particip participatory budget is quite simple. Through an open public vote, the citizens decide what to do with a certain allocated budget amount. This exercise decentralizes the decision power, taking it from the politicians only and passing it to the people, and which involves citizens in the process of and dramatically increases the scrutiny on the executive and bureaucratic executives. Last year, Portugal had 118 active participatory budgets and 35 suspended ones. Since 2002, approximately one third of the Portuguese municipalities have already had experiences with participatory budgets. This year, Portuguese citizens were able to decide the application of 16.8 million euros, not much. A quarter of this amount, 4.2 million euros, is the Cascais contribution. Cascais has the largest amount of the most voted participative budget in Portugal. And this reality makes Portugal the world country where the participatory budget has the greatest implementation, and Cascais is recognized by all as having the largest participatory budget in the country and one of the largest in Europe. In overall figures, today we have more, and this is very important, we have more people 
taking part in the participatory budget than the votes for all the political parties standing for local government elections. I repeat, we have more votes in our participatory budget than we have in our local elections, all parties added together. These are just two examples of global thinking at the local level, looking out to the world and projecting the city. As I've already said, globalization begins right here in our cities. That is why I'm once again extending my gratitude for your presence here, ladies and gentlemen, in this amazing meeting in Oasis. May this time be one of reflection, of course, of debate, of work, and may also, you may also take time to enjoy this beautiful town. And who knows, in the future, you will come here to live just a day, a week, or a lifetime. Thank you very much to you all.